Thank you for joining us today for this PLMA Demand Response Dialogue. This will be a 30-minute conversation with just a minimal uh, amount of PowerPoint slides. We've arranged for a GoToWebinar application link, which allows you to type your questions and comments at any time. But now let me turn the conversation over to Jason Segarin with Converge. He's a PLMA Executive Committee member and the Marketing Committee Chair. Jason? Great. Thanks, Ed. And uh, thanks, everyone, to jo for joining us today on the latest installment of the uh, PLMA DR Dialogue Series. As Ed said, my name is Jason Segarin, and I run Corporate Marketing and Communications for Converge. For those of you not familiar with our company, we're a leading provider of integrated demand response, energy efficiency, and customer engagement solutions. In fact, just a few weeks ago, Navigant Research uh, paid us the kind honor of ranking as the number one demand response vendor in the industry. Uh, today's conversation is going to focus on PEPCO's, two of PEPCO's programs, their EnergyWise Rewards Demand Response Program and Peak Energy Savings Credit, which is a dynamic pricing program. Now, both of these programs received the Program Pace Setter Award at the uh, PLMA Spring Conference, which took place last April in Tucson, Arizona. This awards program recognizes energy industry leaders who create innovative methods to meet peak low needs, mitigate price risks, as well as manage renewable generation, uh, excuse me, variable generation. Um, together, these two PEPCO programs, EnergyWise Rewards and Peak Energy Savings Credit, they deliver more than 520 megawatts of load reduction, and they've even achieved particip participation rates of more than 60% in several markets, including uh, PEPCO Maryland. So this, ex this high participation rate certainly demonstrates that when you have excellent program design and excellent program outreach and communication, you can gain strong market acceptance of, uh, of these types of programs. So joining me today from PEPCO is Susan Marinelli, and she is the program manager for EnergyWise Awards at PEPCO Holdings. She is in charge of managing both residential and small commercial demand response programs for two utility brands, which is PEPCO and then Delmarva Power in Maryland. Prior to joining PEPCO, Susan was the program coordinator of several renewable energy and excuse me, renewable energy and energy efficiency programs for a local government, and she also supported the U.S. Department of Energy in management of the Energy Star program. Susan earned an MBA from the University of Maryland, so she's a TERP, and she also has two Bachelor of Science degrees: one in environmental policy and then another in environmental and business economics from Rutgers University. So she's also a Scarlet Knight. Susan also has a toddler at home, so presumably she has much more on her plate than just the demand response programs that we're going to about to discuss today. So before we get into the details about the program, Susan, I was hoping you could first talk about what were the driving forces that led PEPCO to create both of these very successful programs. Susan? Yeah, great, Jason. Thank you so much for the glowing introduction and um, for pointing out my various alma maters. Just real quick, a fun fact. The only school colors I've ever had throughout my entire life have been black and red. So um, just kind of a, a funny little anecdote there. But yes, um, some of the things that, that drive the Energy Wise Rewards and the Peace Savings Credit Program, um, I really have to point out that Governor Martin O'Malley, uh, his initiative, the Empower Maryland Program, was instrumental. Um, uh, for folks who are not kind of in the mid-Atlantic, um, Empower Maryland is a is an initiative to reduce energy use within the state 15% by 2015, and that 15% is over the, the 2007 um, baseline energy use. So Energy Wise Rewards is one program in PEPCO's suite of demand response and energy efficiency programs that work to support the Empower Maryland goal. Um, all utilities operating in the state are working towards the Empower goal with their own program mix. And I must say, with our combined effort, we are close to meeting this, this goal. And on the slide you can see here, there's just a couple stats about PEPCO holdings in our service territory. Um, the, the company does operate Energy Watch Rewards Direct Load Control programs in our other utility brands in Delmarva Power and also Atlantic City Electric. Um, so regarding the peak energy savings credit, uh, program. This was launched in 2013 as more of a behavioral alternative to energy wise rewards. And so what this program does is it is our dynamic, dynamic pricing program. Um, um, and so it, it, it's sort of an alternative to having energy wise rewards in which we use um, devices to curtail air conditioning, 
load and reduction, customers can choose how they want to reduce their energy use voluntarily. So um, we'll get more into the details about, about the programs, I'm sure, later. But just another driving force to, that's worth noting is that PEPCO does fit into the CJM capacity market, so of course there's also economic benefits to operating these programs. Okay, thanks, Susan. I guess it's a really important reminder of how important regulatory mandates can be to help drive the success of these programs as well as the creation of these programs. So, so just a quick uh, update. How many customers so far have participated in the EnergyWise Awards and the Peak Energy Savings Credit programs? Sure. Well, in our Maryland service territory, we've had more than 185,000 customers participate in EnergyWise Rewards um, since 2009. And um, just to compare that to what that what that looks like, um, we have 400,000 residential customers in Maryland. So um, just about just about half. Um, and it's important to note uh, too that we since we install devices on customers' central air conditioners and heat pumps, not all of PEPCO's customers are actually eligible to participate in EnergyWise Rewards. So that kind of, you know, that, that shrinks our eligible population there. And so by our calculations, yeah, about 50% of our customers um, who are eligible have participated. Um, and our peak energy savings credit program, on the other hand, being the, the dynamic pricing program, any individually metered customer can participate. So we, by our calculations, approximately 50% of um, eligible customers have participated in peak energy savings credits. Wow, that's such an impressive result, Susan. You guys really have done a great job of really driving participation for both of these programs. So can you, let's move to sort of the mechanics of the program. So I was hoping next we could discuss, you know, how both peak energy savings credit and energy wise rewards work. You know, what are sort of the mechanics and details behind these programs? Sure, um, and I guess if, if you wouldn't mind switching to the next slide, I'll talk about peak energy savings credit first. This is an ad that ran in the local section of the Washington Post. So um, just you know, peruse this ad while, while I'm explaining it. Um, peak energy savings credit, the dynamic pricing program, we use stay ahead messages to our customers. So we send either a, we, we send customers either a phone call, an email, or a text to encourage them to voluntarily reduce their energy use on peak savings day, the day before we hold a peak savings day. And if they reduce their energy use below their individual baseline, they then receive a credit off on their bill. So you're probably wondering what our baseline is. Um, it's actually the average of three highest energy use days within a 30-day period. So if the customer successfully reduces their energy below their baseline on a peak savings day, they receive a credit of $1.25 per kilowatt hour off their bill. Um, you can imagine how important that is to have that day ahead message to remind customers that the next day is going to be a peak savings day. Um, and in that message, and in our advertising particularly, we include energy saving messages and tips, and such as um, unplugging your appliances or devices that aren't in use, increasing your air conditioner temperature, um, maybe closing blinds, offsetting the time that you run your dishwasher or clothes washer, um, barbecuing out, outside instead of cooking inside, um, those types of things. So we do try to, to give, give those tips so it's easy for customers to take action um, when a peak savings day does come up. And I should note too that actually today is a peak savings day in the, in the uh, PEPCO service territory. So um, we did send our day ahead messaging out to customers just just last evening, and um, we'll be running an energy wise reward event here shortly. Okay, thanks, Susan. So, now let's uh, switch gears. Do you want to go start talking about a little more about energy wise rewards? Sure, sure. Um, energy wise rewards is the direct load control program, and uh, this is the program that is supported by Converge. And in this slide, here you'll see the EnergyWise Reward companion ad to the Peak Energy Saving Credit ad that you just saw. Um, customers voluntarily enroll in EnergyWise Rewards, and when, by doing so, they agree to let us install either a web programmable thermostat or an outdoor switch on their central air conditioner or on their heat pump. Um, and then these outdoor switches and thermostats are what we use to cycle air conditioners off and on for short periods of time. 
again, um, we activate the program on, on our peak savings days. And when customers sign up to participate in EnergyWise Rewards, they can choose to participate at 50%, 75%, or 100% cycling. And then they receive credits off, in their, off on their bills that are commensurate with the cycling level they select. And, and Susan, are customers able to participate in both programs at the same time? Absolutely. And that is, that is the, the key message in our customer recruitment campaign is because customers um, are encouraged to participate in both. The programs operate on the same day. So um, if customers want the, air, want the um, devices, they can participate that way. If they, if they want to just take action voluntarily, they can participate that way. Um, they can do both at the same time. And it's just important to note that both programs are voluntary. So it really speaks to customers' preferences on how they want to manage their home and their schedules, frankly. Okay, so now you talked about how the numbers of people that you've got participating in these programs. Can you talk a little bit behind the recruitment strategies and how you were able to achieve these incredible rates of participation? Sure. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of longevity here. Energy Wise Rewards has actually been in operation since 2009. So it's pretty familiar to our, our customers. Um, we've, we've done a lot, a lot of recruitment materials, a lot of customer education um, in those years. And Peak Energy Savings Credit had a soft launch in 2013, but was really strongly promoted in 2014. And uh, again, we did promote the program together, so Energy Wise Rewards and Peak Energy Savings Credit. And the campaign I want to highlight here um, is entitled Two Ways to Save. And the key message of the campaign is peak energy saving credit is the hands-on way to save money and energy. Energy-wise rewards make saving automatic. And so you can see these are actually two brochures. It's just the front and the back of brochures that we send out in a, in a toolkit to customers in the beginning of the summer. So in this toolkit, it will include um, a peak energy savings credit brochure, an energy-wise rewards brochure, a letter, just letting them know, um, you know, about the programs coming on this summer. And also we send them a magnet that has a couple energy saving tips on them so customers, you know, can know how to quickly reduce energy use on a peak savings day. So be it that customers can choose how to participate, it's just really appealing to customers because some of them, you know, don't want the utility to control their HVAC equipment. Um, and those customers can choose the peak energy savings credit and to take action that way. Customers felt that they would not necessarily remember to take action and, you know, want a thermostat, um, want to participate in energy-wise rewards. So, you know, customers have options. That's a big part of our education campaign, and that message was repeated through all of our education campaign materials. Uh, our materials include radio ads, print ads in, in local newspapers, also Washington Post local sections. Um, we have web banners on several different websites that, that are you know, geocoded to our area, so we're really sure that we're targeting our customers. Also transit ads, billboards, and we do reach our customers directly through mail, bill inserts, and of course our social media platform. Um, and I think, too, one of the just big, big successes of, of Peak Energy Savings Credit is receiving that day ahead notice. You know, that phone call, that email, that text message reminds folks to take steps to reduce energy the next day, um, tells them what time to do so, and um, it also reminds folks, again, of energy wise rewards. So we're literally calling, emailing, and texting our customers about these programs and also saying, you know, and here's Energy Ways Rewards, again, just in case um, they aren't already participants. So promoting these programs together um, in such a, a collaborative way, you know, back to the stat I mentioned earlier, 60% of our customers reducing their energy use through one or both programs. Uh, also yield us the results of 250 megawatts of capacity. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. Thank you very much, Susan. That's, that's a, a, some good lessons learned for the audience. So um, before we get to the Q&A portion, uh, Q portion of the uh, DR Dialogue, 
Can you outline a few more of these lessons learned and maybe some best practices that you've learned along the way? Sure, sure. Um, I'd say, first off, you know, research is key. Anytime you're starting a new project, of course, you spend time up front studying other programs, um, other program structures, learning from other successes. Um, I even think, you know, groups like this, just a quick plug for PLMA, there's so many resources out there offered by, by um, industry groups that are, that are really valuable. So we found that also important to understand our market and our customers. Um, all of our marketing collateral that I've shared with you and, and even more that, that I didn't share with you here today, we tested it through focus groups and that really helped make our message stronger. It helped make our pieces stronger, um, helped us understand, you know, what customers um, understand about these programs. You know, everyone's busy, has busy schedules, so having that dialogue with your, with your customers to really see what they know and what's important to them is, is helpful to building a, a stronger program and certainly getting their interest in the program. Um, can't say enough about this. Number two here, have a knowledgeable and integrated team. Everyone on the program implementation team from the marketing groups, we have a couple of different contractors working on marketing. We have an internal design and evaluation team, also you know, third party uh, evaluation teams, our call center, our operations center. Everyone is um, spooling up on, on these programs you know, before we come into the summer cooling season. And so um, any time there was a, a program change, you know, it was, it was just making sure that everyone was, was on board with the change and aware of it. And I, I think, too, um, another really good one was partnering with regulators. We found it extremely valuable to build relationships with our regulators and, and I guess more importantly, maybe the staff of the Public Service Commission. Because if there were ever program changes or, or ideas that we were going to um, present or pitch in a hearing or um, put forth to the commission, it just helped that the staff understood where we were coming from and, and maybe gave us some questions for consideration and, and tweaked things that we could do to maybe make things fit with, with the regulatory environment. So um, that helped, helped uh, with any surprises that would come down the road. And last but not least, and we talked a lot about marketing, but it's just important to develop a plan for the year. You know, use as many tools as possible um, in your tool bag and kind of stick to that plan. You know, whether um, marketing is going to build on itself, you know, if it's sending out one direct mail and then following up with postcards or um, making sure the ad campaign's running at the right time, that's, that's important because you want to get as many impressions out there at the same time as possible. Um, so the marketing plan was, was crucial to this. All right, great. Thanks, Susan. And that, so that, that concludes sort of the initial part of this webinar with, of the DR Dialogue. Now we're going to go to the uh, questions that we received both prior to the event and during the event. So Susan, you had talked about the two ways to say being a very effective uh, marketing program. Do you have ability to talk about what you think was the most effective sales and marketing tactic you used? Sure. Well, in two ways to say it was a marketing campaign that kind of overlaid on other activities that, that we were doing. Um, I would say for energy-wise rewards individually, you know, if we're talking about just that program, the door-to-door -door recruitment um, is crucial because there are there are nuances and there there are um, differences with every single household. So having a, a representative be there on your doorstep to ask questions to and get your answers. Was, was just very helpful. Um, for peak energy saving credits, the day ahead notice, um, I think, is, is what's instrumental in making sure folks participate because, you know, we all need reminders. We're all very busy, and so you, you let folks know the day before that's going to get um, more people into your program. And, and for both, you know, we talked a lot about the different types of, of materials in the campaign, um, the two ways to save, one of the things that really stuck out to to us was the use of oversized postcards in the mail. You know, when we send direct mail, we would we would start with that toolkit in the beginning of the summer that included brochures and a magnet and, and sort of that, you know, splashier um, welcome, if you will, and then follow on with, with two different postcards that 
that just the front and back, colorful, you know, using customer images, um, brands clearly displayed as a reminder to say, hey, this is what's going on. Um, no, that was, that's been a very effective tool for us to keep it fresh in people's minds. Okay, thanks, Susan. So the next question here is, what is the best medium for reaching decision makers among your for small uh, to medium business customers? Oh yeah, um, face to face recruitment certainly. Um, you're you're dealing with folks who are the CFO, the CEO, the dishwasher, you know, everything. And so if you can get a minute of their time, you know, get a brochure in their hands and and just talk to them for a minute, that's been most effective. And I think. Um, you know, there's often what's what's challenging about enroll, enrolling um, commercial customers too is that you're trying to meet them where they are. So I think getting in front of them is important, and whether that's through local groups like chambers of commerce or those types of things, um, you really need to to have that that meet the customer where they are moment to kind of get in front of them. And it, it's it's something we struggle with here. <laughs> very much. Okay. Thanks for that. So the next question we have in is um, how have smart slash learning thermostats changed the demand response game? Is, is there any evidence of higher satisfaction for the uh, for the customers that are on those devices versus the switches? Um, sure. Well, I, I can't really speak to the industry as a whole, um, but what I can say is that Tepco is researching smart thermostats. And um, we are considering adding on a, a bring your own thermostat component to our Energy Wise Rewards program. Um, that said, we're also testing a, a Wi Fi thermostat to replace our program original model um, and believe that a smart thermostat model will, will increase customer satisfaction. And a big part of that customer satisfaction, again, is meeting the customer where they are. Um, everyone's so plugged into their phones, all these smart thermostats have apps. Or you know where they can be ex where they can be accessed uh, remotely. So um, you know, speaking personally, I, I think that's really a great way um, to increase customer satisfaction. And and we're we're working out how that's going to look for our programs going forward. Yeah, I know a lot of commerce customers are right now exploring you know how they can add a uh, add the BYOT or BYOD component to their program. So it's certainly certainly a trend worth monitoring. Um, one more question here. We have, do you have examples of targeting demand response solutions at a district scale to avoid costly infrastructure upgrades? Um, yeah, on, on, on a broader level, um, I would say, you know, PEPCO, PHI uh, was looking at a project back in, in like 2010-11 um, called MAP. And this was a high voltage transmission line that was going to, um, you know, connect. Because I mean, Maryland is an energy importing state, so um, what actually happened was this project was was canceled in 2012, and it was canceled by both um, PJM uh, and and PHI and a couple other utilities that were considering this. And a few reasons it was canceled that were cited was that you know, there was a slower economy. Um, a couple of years ago, so there was reduced energy growth. Um, the projected growth was reduced, I should say. And also, um, PJM's capacity auction, uh, there were several thousand megawatts of both uh, new generation and demand response. And so, um, we here, you know, we're, we're thrilled with that because that meant that our programs were working. And to tie it back to my initial remarks with, with the Empower Maryland um, program and the goal to reduce energy use 15% by 2015, you know, it, it kind of demonstrated that that the programs were, were doing what they were supposed to do. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and and so I, I guess I would cite that example. Okay. Thanks, Susan. And then um, one question here that came in a few minutes ago. We have, how does the Peak Energy Savings Credit Program know how much k kilowatt hours have been saved? So how do you, how do you measure that program? Sure. Um, well, you know, it goes into our smart meter data. Um, we have we have customers' information, and we we figure out what what they were using, and it's, it's all tied into our smart meter data. And um, fortunately, I'm not the one who has to crunch those numbers, so I, I can't speak to all the all the intricacies of it. But um, 
we, we do know what customer's baseline is, and then when we see what they reduced within that window, you know, using all that data, um, we can calculate the, the total energy reductions from all of our customers. Okay, and then we have, we have a similar question along those lines. Um, how do you verify or measure the reductions on the customers using the load control switches? So that, that is also, um, we have not really been using smart meter data for that. We have done um, site, or excuse me, I should say on-site examples or, or studies using, you know, data loggers and those types of things across a variety of different homes, you know, different home sizes, um, different numbers of occupancies, different systems, all those types of things. And so we do use an average number to determine our, um, our energy reductions from, from our direct load control program. And, and that's the number that's been, you know, verified through several different um, third-party evaluators to, to come up with those savings figures. Okay. And then um, we have time for, I think, two more questions here. And then uh, anyone who didn't get their question answered will, will be taking those offline, so we just have a few more minutes here left in, in the webinar. So um, how many, do you have stats on how many customers participate in both programs? How many overlap? Yeah, that's, that's kind of tricky. Um, you know, we really haven't sliced the data that way. It's possible for us to do so. Um, we, know the program, we know the customers do participate in both, but unfortunately I don't have those stats at my fingertips right now. Okay. And then the, the final question we have here, Susan, is the day had messages sent to customers. Are they sent via email or are they sent via text messages or, or both approaches? Um, three, three approaches, phone, email, and text. Um, the, the automatic opt-in option is, is phone. So most, most customers, um, my understanding is from the last update, uh, most customers just choose to get the phone message. Um, customers can go into their account and choose to switch that phone message to an email or a text. So it really is the customer's choice about how we communicate with them. All right. Well, thank you very much, Susan. And as I said, you know, anyone who didn't get their question answered today, we'll, we'll follow up with you offline. Um, so the slide you see here is just an overview of the Peak Load Management Alliance. Um, before I pass it back to Ed, I want to know that we are in the process of planning the fall conference which is going to take place in Charlotte, North Carolina, the first week of November. So hopefully uh, you'll sign up for that and we can see you there. Ed? Yeah, thanks a lot, Jason, for the plug for that. And if uh, you do want to learn about upcoming demand response dialogues and see an archive of past recordings, you can do that at peakload.org. Um, and as he mentioned, we'll pass along those other questions that maybe we didn't get to because of time. I want to thank you all for joining us today. This concludes our dialogue.